A chirality center is a carbon atom in a molecule with four single bonds. And those four single bonds are to four unique groups or atoms. We'll just say four unique things. Chirality centers are sometimes referred to as chiral carbons. They are also referred to as stereocenters. And they may be known by a few other names as well that might have the term chiral or stereo or carbon or center, any kind of combination of them. Chirality centers cause molecules to be chiral. If a molecule has a chirality center, it is almost always going to be chiral. If it doesn't have any chirality centers, it is typically not going to be chiral. We're going to look at a few examples, starting pretty simple, with some molecules that have chirality centers. So in this first molecule, our goal is to just simply find the chirality centers in the molecule. And remember, in order to be a chirality center, first you have to be a carbon atom, so everything that's not a carbon atom is not eligible. Second, it has to have four single bonds. If it has a double bond or a triple bond, it's not eligible. Last, those four single bonds need to be to four unique things. Like this carbon right here has a bond to a fluorine, a bond to a hydrogen, a bond to a bromine, and a bond to a CH3. And that makes this guy a chirality center. We don't have a particular notation in chemistry um, for identifying or labeling chirality centers. Sometimes we put stars next to them or just kind of point arrows at them, something like that. Here's our second carbon atom in the molecule. It has four bonds. However, it does not have four bonds to unique things. It has a bond to a hydrogen, another bond to a hydrogen, and just right there, we can stop counting. It is not a chirality center because it has at least two bonds to identical things, at least two bonds to hydrogen. In fact, it has three. Chirality center, molecules with chirality centers are usually drawn not in a standard Lewis structure or a standard line structure. They are usually drawn using what we call wedge and dash notation to help show the specific shape of the four unique groups around the chirality center. So this might be a way that we would draw this Lewis structure right here. It might look totally different at first when you first look at it, but that's because I've taken this CH3 group and I've just compressed it down like this. This particular notation is showing a three-dimensional shape to this molecule. The way that this molecule is drawn, the carbon and the hydrogen bond and the fluorine bond, which are both being shown as just normal single bonds, these are all, these three uh, atoms are all flat with respect to the paper. So you can imagine that these three objects are just sitting flat with respect to the paper or the computer screen, whatever you're looking at. They're just parallel to it. This triangle thing here, we refer to as a wedge bond. And this is another way of representing a single bond so this just means a single bond but this particular object this ch3 is indicated to be sticking out of the computer screen or sticking out of your paper this triangle or this wedge bond means that it is not flat on the paper but instead it's sticking up sticking out at you and this bond over here which we refer to as a dashed bond this is also another way of representing a single bond but it is also showing direction the dashed bond is used to indicate a bond that is sticking into the surface, into your computer screen or into your paper, into your table or into your desk. So this is attempting to show an actual three-dimensional object or three-dimensional shape of this molecule. Let's draw, um, because this, this carbon is chiral, this molecule therefore is also chiral. So let's draw its mirror image. Let's draw a mirror right here. And then let's draw the mirror image of this object over here on the other side of my mirror. When we're being asked to draw the mirror image of a molecule, especially if it is being shown using the wedge and the dash notation, we're just literally going to draw its mirror image. So I'm going to start with the carbon atom and the hydrogen that's sticking up. Draw that right there. We have a dashed bromine that is up-ish. So it's kind of pointing up-ish and it's pointing at the mirror. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other molecule. The dashed bromine is kind of pointing in the upward direction and it's pointing at the mirror. 
And then I have the CH3 on a wedge and it's kind of pointing downward and it's also pointing towards the mirror. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. CH3 that's kind of pointing downward towards the mirror. And then last but not least, I have a fluorine on a straight bond pointing downwards away from the mirror. So like that. Both of these objects are chiral. They are mirror images of each other, which makes them enantiomers.